Hey, what's up guys? Jackson here at Toasted DIY, and today we're going to be taking a look and unboxing the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and this is the Combo AMS version. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So I recently did an unboxing and full review of this A1 from Bamboo Lab, and this was also the combo that came with the AMS Lite. That printer came in at about $450 with the AMS, which is a pretty dang good price, especially considering it has some amazing features and it actually competes really well with the Bamboo Lab's P1S that I run at home. This right here is the P1S Big Brother, the printer that's been out longer than the P1S, the X1 Carbon. So this printer is very heavy. It's a pretty much all aluminum frame as opposed to the P1 that is much plastic. This printer comes in at close to $1,500 when you fully spec it out with the combo AMS and that is what we have here. And now I expect with this to not need a whole lot of building. I know that with my P1 at home, I didn't really have to do a whole lot of building. So it was pretty simple. I just had to cut some zip ties, remove a couple screws. Now the A1 definitely required some assembly. All right, let's go ahead and get this 3D printer open. Now, this 3D printer almost takes a lift team. Uh, it, you know, it almost takes two people. Now, it's not super heavy. I think once we get some of the contents out of the box, uh, we'll realize there's probably a few extra pounds um, added on with some of the accessories and foam and padding because uh, if I know one thing about Bamboo Labs is that they pack their printers really well. And that's really one of the biggest things I've noticed after unboxing, um, you know, two, now three of their printers is their step-by-step -step guides are really unmatched. Um, it is just so simple to get these printers up and going. So um, the first thing we had to do was cut some of this. And I think I'm gonna have to put this on the ground actually because uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty darn heavy. Here we go. Yeah, so one thing I already gotta just give a, a shout out, um, you know, to this being a more expensive and all-in-one piece printer, is I can already tell it's gonna be a lot less assembly with this one. You know, it came out in one piece. Now it does look like there's a lot of stuff in the inside of the printer, but on the outside guys, we literally just get a few items. So they actually give us uh, two spools of filament. Now these are like quarter and maybe half spools. Let's see, it looks like two things of white, one green. Um, they appear to all be PLA. Uh, you know, it's cool that they give you something to start with. Uh, most 3D printers will give you a little something, but uh, like our little A1 over there actually didn't even come with a spool. It came with more of like a, uh, you know, maybe a, a few feet worth of uh, filament. Just going ahead and getting some of the uh, clear plastic off, which actually, so this is already a lot like my P1 actually, my P1S. Okay, so I guess that the AMS is literally like screwed in right now. Now usually taking these off is pretty easy. I mean, they, they kind of, it, it, they really do like, I feel like they go through and test with like a bunch of different people, um, like the setup guides and these things, because they're just so like foolproof, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm on my third printer, like I said, and I don't really like reading instructions. I don't read them very well, if I'm being honest. And uh, I mean, they're just, they're just great. All right. So now for step two, we should be able to just pull this whole unit out. Uh, there is, I do got to get this piece of foam out. There's like a little, little piece of foam wedged up at the top that kind of stops you from pulling it out. All right, and there's number four. Uh, ensure that the bed plate is on and it matches. Okay, so yeah, because these things are actually magnetic, which I found out when I was doing the A1. And then remove the foam, and this is where your excess filament, whenever it's like swapping filaments or just cleaning goes. And this is all glass, by the way, guys. I believe it should be tempered glass. Um, handle this with care. All right, so this goes handle facing the front of the printer. Should be good just to go ahead and just place this on top and attaching it to this side here. And usually they just kind of clip into place. Now let's see, we got, cause we got two different connectors. Okay, so it looks like one's a four pin, one's a six pin. Plug that into there. Make sure that's a good tight connection. And this goes to the AMS like that. And then the four pin goes a little lower and we'll use the angled part and put that to this piece right here. Yeah, I mean, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and veto the, the extra um, spool going back here just because we're already gonna have the four spools up top. Uh, it looks like remove three more screws so that we can actually get the uh, hot plate or the actual bed of the printer able to move up and down. All right, hot bed is unlocked. Now, in theory, I don't think we'll be able to, yeah, you can't really lift it up yet just because uh, you gotta actually turn it on and move the uh, axes up and down. So we'll go ahead and close this. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the screen mounting. So I already removed the tape. Uh, this should only go on one way. 
that was a pretty satisfying little click. Okay, and then you're basically gonna kind of feed the extra ribbon cable back in, and then this locks into place. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave that peel on for now, just to keep fingerprints off as long as we can. Peels and whatnot, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, raise the bed up so we can get that foam out. Don't forget to get that foam out, because that stuff could melt on you. All right guys, so I got the 3D printer. All we gotta do is uh, connect to Wi-Fi, and then we scan a QR code, and boom, we're in, we're good to go. And honestly, this might not be the smartest way to do this, but. All right guys, so we got four different filaments loaded. We have uh, two PETG filaments, and then two PLA filaments, and uh, I know if it's anything like the A1, you can only print with one material at a time. So for example, if you have a print that uses AMS, we could use these two on one print, and then we could use these two on another print, or uh, vice versa. So we should be good to go, and I will say these AMS units are so cool. Um, so if you're loading the filament, it's pretty easy really. You just basically, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. There we go. And if you look at that, it actually will start auto-pulling the filament, which is so cool. And what's even crazier is, uh, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sure that there's a much simpler explanation, but it's able to actually tell what type of filament that you're using, which I think is just insane. So yeah, as you guys can see here, uh, super cool. It, it can literally tell what type of filament you have entered. You, as you guys can see, just like we have here. Uh, so it's, it's a little off on the black, but that's probably because it's transparent. Uh, and this is actually, of course, transparent brown, but blue, white, green. And as you can see, we got blue, white, green, and this is PETG translucent. The color is brown. Confirm, there we go. But at this point, we should be good to go ahead and start 3D printing, so let's get something going. All right, so I found a 3D print that I like. Uh, it's pretty usable, too. All right, and we're gonna choose, so we were just using the A1, but now we're gonna be using the X1 Carbon. And we're gonna go next. And here is where we will get to choose our colors. So I really wanna try out this translucent, and then we're gonna use the blue. So we're gonna actually be using a solid color and then translucent color. Um, and you can actually go into here, press preview colors, and kind of get a basic like 3D rundown of what's going to be what colors. We are gonna have to select, we're gonna do the textured PEIE plate because that's actually the plate that comes on there. Now we're gonna press start print. And that is literally all we have to do. In theory, we should be good to go. And the cool part is if you press this, you can actually see what your 3D printer is doing in pretty real time. I will say it's usually, it's chunky for sure. I mean, it's a very slow real time, but it is somewhat real time. So you can actually make sure your 3D print's working. All right guys, so we just got done doing our very first print on the X1 Carbon. So this was uh, both PETG, we have a solid blue PETG and then a translucent one, which you can see, kind of tell that it's see-through, but uh, really only on like the thinner parts, of course, but it turned out like perfect. I still have some of the support pieces kind of on here, so you can always take like an X-Acto knife and uh, really smooth this out, but yeah, it turned out super clean. And like I said, guys, first print with no like hand calibrating done. This was all done by the machine, um, even the AMS stuff, so super happy with this printer. Well guys, that's pretty much gonna wrap up the uh, Bamboo Lab for now. So I may end up doing a video on my P1S at home as well, but it was pretty cool getting to basically do their entry level printer and then their top of the line printer, both of them with the AMS, uh, which is also really cool because I do not have AMS at home. I just bought the base printer with the one spool of filament uh, and it really does an amazing job with this is really cool being able to do multiple different colors, up to four, and yeah, you can expand them as well, which is also awesome. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out Toasty Bros and Toasty Clips, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.